Well, without the rest of these qualities that we'll talk about in today's video, any progress that you make in Bible study will be destroyed like a wrestler getting slammed to the mat. So this is a pretty important lesson for us today. Hello church, today's video lesson is lesson seven of a 20 part video series we've been teaching through on Bible study. And today we're continuing our teaching through the book, How to Understand the Bible for Yourself. We started last time with the first three requirements for Bible study. And today's video continues with points four through 12. So we're covering a lot today. And I'd go so far as to say that if any number of these are missing, that you can't actually study the Bible accurately. So if you're new here, my name is Ryan Wrench. I'm the pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in Temecula, California. We recorded this video series over a year ago for an extension ministry of a Bible college. And I just hope that it's a help to you. I hope it helps you grow in knowing Jesus better and helps you get into God's word. So with that, enjoy this week's video. Well, hello, we've made it to class number seven. Good job. That's a good number. I mean, there's seven days in a week. And so uh, so class number seven is where we're starting today. Um, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it just feels like a, a, a good milestone for us. So congratulations for making it this far. I'm looking forward to this lesson today. We started last lesson, class number six, with the requirements for uh, Bible study. Because we're bringing something to the Bible when we, when we pick it up. We're bringing ourselves. And so we have to know uh, that we're ready to study the Bible. We're, um, we're not approaching it like we're fixing the Bible. So we said last time that we have to have a spiritual life. There must be a, a, a spiritual aliveness. You have to be saved. That's the, that's the best way to study the Bible. And then approach it with a spirit of reverence and awe and respect for the scriptures. Um, and, then, and then thirdly, have the right objective. We're, um, we're trying to know God, trying to know his will, and, uh, and trying to help other people. And so I'm thankful for the scriptures. I'm thankful to approach it in that way. And I want to continue on with where we left off in the last lesson with uh, point number four now of the spiritual requirements or the requirements for Bible study, the things that I'm needing to prepare myself when I'm studying the scriptures. And number four is understanding the Bible requires obedience. And throughout our course of Bible study and understanding the Bible for ourselves, then we don't want to just have a head knowledge. We don't want to just understand the Bible and know that it's full of a bunch of nice stories that we can tell to our kids. But we want to understand the Bible so we can obey it. It's a unique book like that. You can read any book from the library or any book that man has written, and you don't necessarily have to obey it. But man, when we study the Bible, we're opening up God's word, and we're compelled to obey it. We must obey it, especially once we understand it. We're, we're called to obey it. Um, 1 Peter chapter 2 says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Okay, so Bible study has kind of this two-pronged approach according to that text. We're supposed to lay aside... Um, malice, guile, hypocrisies, envies, and evil speakings. Okay, so there's a kind of a spiritual preparation that, that I need to have before coming into uh, the scriptures. I need to lay aside any of these evil parts of me. I need to confess those sins, those, uh, those malicious sins, the guile, the hypocrisy. I need to set those things aside and, and repent of those sins and confess them. And then the second aspect of that is that man, just like a newborn baby, as they crave and, and as they cry out for milk, I've had, I've had three kids, as I mentioned in the first class, Abe and Charlotte and Gwen. And so um, all, all three of our kids 
uh, were just healthy babies, didn't have um, any problems with that. And, um, and so my wife would feed them. And it was just such a routine, uh, especially as newborn babies. I mean, every couple hours they were crying out for more and more and always wanting more milk. And in a sense, um, the Apostle Peter is saying, look, you need to have that same kind of a craving for God's word. Just like a baby craves milk, you need to um, sincerely desire, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. So we're setting aside the evils of the world and then coming to the scriptures with a hunger for it. Um, R.A. Torrey, I quoted him in the last lesson, he said, it's remarkable how clear, simple, and beautiful passages that once puzzled us become when we're brought to that place where we say to God, I surrender my will unconditionally to yours. I have no will but yours. Teach me your will. He says a surrendered will does more to make the Bible an open book than a university education. It's simply impossible to get the largest profit out of your Bible study till you surrender your will to God. And I love that approach. I love that mentality. I love that mindset that he says, just having a heart that says, I obey God, whatever you want for me, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to follow God. Well, then that, that changes Bible study right there. And the Bible says in John 7, 17, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So we're called there to know the doctrine, uh, to know of the doctrine. And then John 8 says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, Well, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And so there's a continuing there in God's word that I want to I want to know it. I want to know the doctrine and I want to continue in it and I want to constantly obey that. I don't want to just know it one time, but I want to persistently continue in it as well. Search me, O God, Psalm 139 says. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And that's a, that's a compelling prayer to prayer is that you're saying, God, I want to be completely obedient to you. I, I want to be open to whatever your word says. Now, we understand from the parable of the sowing of the word in Mark chapter 4 that, that certain things in life can, it says, choke out the word. It, it, can, it, can, grip, it can grip your life and they can choke out what wants to grow in you. And man, God wants to get a hold of your heart. He wants you to obey him. He wants you to follow him. But there's so many things. I know, especially here in America and here in California where I am, there are so many things that distract and that choke the word out of people's lives. And it grieves me to see people who once were on fire for God get so distracted by so many other things. And yet that's what the scriptures teach. Worldly lusts will choke out the word. And so a Christian who's approaching the scriptures must approach it with an obedient heart that just says, God, whatever you want, you're the authority. I'm not. I want you to have full control of my life and be obedient in whatever realm that you want me to be obedient in. And that's a good way to approach the scriptures. So that was number four. Number five, understanding the scriptures requires a hunger for God and his truth. A hunger for God and his truth. Job verse Job chapter 23 said, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. And I love when there's people that have such a hunger for the Bible and love to study the scriptures, love to get into it. I, I'm, I'm so burdened for people who just, who, who think the Bible is so boring and dry and dull they're not reading the same book I'm reading. And I'm reading a book that's alive and that's life-changing and, and that molds people and shapes their life and changes them. I love the people who are hungry for the scriptures and, and who meditate on it day and night and who filter their whole lives through the scriptures. 
I'm on a Bible reading app, um, and it shows you know who's starting different Bible reading plans. And there's a lady in my church that just in the church that I pastor. It's not my church; it's God's church. But in the church that I pastor, and uh, just yesterday I saw a notification on there that she started a Bible reading plan um, that she'll complete the Bible in 30 days. A 30-day Bible reading plan, and and. And I'm impressed by that. That's a whole lot of reading. And that's a whole lot of, um, if she's not reading constantly, then it's uh, listening through, you know, maybe she's doing some exercising and listening or maybe one while she's driving to work. That's what's on in the background in an audio Bible format where she's listening and, and just constantly consuming the scriptures and allowing the scriptures to, um, to, to change her mind and to be renewed in the spirit of her mind, like Ephesians 4 uh, teaches us. And I love that. I love that there's a hunger for God's word, for God and his truth. If there's uh, a hunger in my kids for uh, just food, well, I as a parent don't want them to fill up on junk food and candy. And uh, my youngest daughter, Gwen, Lately, she's been eating ice cream. And then after eating ice cream, she says, my belly hurts. And we say, well, you had too much ice cream. You spoiled your, um, you spoiled your belly because it's too much junk food. And we can do that spiritually too. We can get to the point where we put too much junk food in our lives and we need rich meat of the word of God to be put into our lives. And so study the scriptures and have a hunger for God and his truth. Don't spoil your appetite on lesser things. Number six, understanding the Bible requires the right priority. Requires the right priority. Seek ye first, what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. So that seeking is is putting God first in my life, that everything I do, I want to make sure I'm following the Lord. Um, He he said he's magnified his word above his very name in Psalm 138, verse 2. And so uh, in in kind of seeking God first and seeking first the kingdom of God, a couple ideas on that is Bible study, I think, should come first in the day. I understand and we have people in our church and I used to work overnight. And so the very first thing I would do in the daytime was fall asleep because I would get home at 7.30 in the morning. And so I understand if that's your situation, your work situation doesn't allow for that, um, then uh, you work your situation around, obviously. But you know, I love waking up in the morning. I wake up real early in the morning and the very first thing I do is, uh, well, the first thing I do is walk to my coffee pot and I make some coffee. Uh, But while that's brewing, then I get out the scriptures and I'm reading my Bible and, and, and that's the thing that's, that's changing my thinking. That's what's helping me. And, and many times I'll read several chapters before even taking my first drink of coffee. And so I even try to many times put the Bible above coffee. And, and that's a good priority to have, to have as the first thing in the day. The author of this book said that when he was dating his wife, then they were writing letters back and forth. And he said, I I didn't even want to open a love letter from my girlfriend before I had spent time with the love letter from my God. And he wouldn't read his his mail until he read his Bible. And that's a good priority, keeping God first in the day. Um, uh, The second idea there of keeping God first is that it should be given sufficient time. We need to make sure that we're not just giving God a sliver of time, but that he gets a big chunk of our day. Now, I realize in the scripture teaches that if you're a married person, you give much of your time to your family. If you're single, you have more time to give to the things of the Lord. Uh, but if you're married, then necessarily you have to go to work. And, um, you know, if you don't provide for your family, then the scriptures teach, then uh, obviously we have to work and and. We have to work for food, and that's going to be a big portion of our day. But I would hate to spend all of my day working and trying to make money and never working on spiritual things. 
I want to make sure that I'm putting a focus on, on spiritual things and not just a tiny sliver of time, not just one little verse per day, but that I'm actually giving, giving sufficient time to study the scriptures. And studying the scriptures should be a priority above other books as well. I don't want to give more time to other books than I do the Bible. I want most of my time to be in the Bible, not just studying about the Bible, but actually studying the Bible and, and actually studying the scriptures. And so that's a good priority for you as well, a good encouragement for you. And, and that was number six. Number seven is understanding the Bible requires prayer and dependence on the Holy Spirit. Prayer and dependence on the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we might think that goes without saying, but many times, maybe not. That is such a thing we need reminded of all the time that I need to pray. I need to depend, I need to depend on the Holy Spirit to help me understand the scriptures. Psalm 119, the prayer there is, open now mine eyes then I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. That, that was verse number 18 of Psalm 119. He's asking, God, help me. Open my eyes. I need your help in this. Psalm 119, 125 says, I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. And so he's asking for help there. Proverbs 2, verse 3 and 5 say, if, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and lift us up thy voice for understanding, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Trust in the Lord, Proverbs 3, 5 uh, through 7 says. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And so seeking the Lord is a spiritual endeavor, and trusting God through that is a spiritual endeavor, but we need to ask for help in that. We need to seek the Lord in that and seek Him um, all the time. It's not just an intellectual exercise. We're not just exercising our minds when we're reading the Bible, but this is a spiritual act that's happening. And so we need to invite the Holy Spirit into what we're doing. We need to open ourselves up to whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives. And so we need to pray for wisdom. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, James 1 says. And so we need to ask God, God, oh, sometimes there's a text that we don't understand and we're going, God, I really need your help on this. I really don't understand this. I, I really need some wisdom here. And so ask God for that and study uh, with that kind of a spirit. If we think we have all the answers, well, we know from the scripture that God resisteth the proud, but give a grace unto the humble. And the humble are the ones who are coming at Bible study and just saying, I, I don't have all the answers. I need God's help in this. And I'm not, I'm not self-confident. I'm not bringing my own understanding to the scriptures. God, I need your help. And and, and I need your understanding. Our understanding will only get us so far. But with God's help and God's understanding, we'll be able to understand the Bible in such a powerful way. Prayer, R.A. Tori says, prayer will do more than a college education to make the Bible an open and glorious book. Charles Bridges said, without the spirit of prayer, there may be a tension and earnestness Yet not one spiritual impression upon the conscience, not one ray of divine light in the soul. Earthly wisdom is gained by study, heavenly wisdom by prayer. Study may form a biblical scholar. Prayer puts the heart under a heavenly tutorage and therefore forms the wise and spiritual Christian. God keeps the key of the treasure house in his own hand. We look for no other inspiration than divine grace to make his word clear and impressive. Another author said, when you're reading a book in a dark room and come to a difficult part, you take it to the window to get more light. So take your Bibles to Christ. We need to understand the scriptures in a better way. Well, then bring it to Jesus Christ, and he's there to help. That was number seven. Um, understanding the Bible requires prayer and the Holy Spirit. 
Number eight, prayer. I mean, understanding the Bible requires meditation. Meditation. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day, Psalm 119, 97 says. Psalm 1 talks about meditation, doesn't it? It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. It's a constant word that's flowing through our minds. Psalm 119, 99 says, I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. You understood that studying the Bible is not just a one-time thing, but it stays with you through the day, and you meditate on it. A good way to meditate on the scripture is through memorizing it. Study a verse so long that it gets into your soul that you can stay with it without opening a Bible the rest of the day. It's just right here memorized um, in, in your mind and stays with you. So it helps to memorize. It helps to get a good education and good training and good reminders like this uh, video series on Bible study. And it involves a, a mindset that says, man, I want to study the scriptures to see if these things are so, just like the Bereans did, just like 1 Thessalonians 5 says, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. Studying the scripture means that, man, I'm going to, I'm going to test this thing out. I'm going to meditate on it and spend some time with this. And, and, and that's a good habit to do. Number nine, understanding the Bible requires patience and persistence. Patience and persistence. I'm not going to understand everything uh, 100% the very first time I read it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to slog through some things. I mean, we understand that in child rearing, right? One of the verses we read in, in Peter was that we start as newborn babes and we're supposed to desire the sincere milk of the word, but we're not supposed to stay with the milk. We're supposed to grow to the idea that, well, I can handle meat too. So I love the milk of the word, but I want to grow deeper in my understanding so I can get to the meat of the word too. And that's a little bit deeper of Bible studies and a little bit deeper of knowledge. But that's not going to happen at once. Understand it's going to take a little bit of growing. It's going to take a little bit of patience. It's going to take a little bit of time before I'm, I'm all the way there yet. And so that's okay. We can progress through that. Um, this kind of growing, we need to be patient in because there's some pruning that needs to happen. John 15 um, says, I'm the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. And so there's <clears throat> there's seasons where there's some things that might need to be pruned. Um, uh, we have to be patient because, um, because it takes diligent labor. So there might be some pruning. There might be some work. There might just need to be some labor that goes into it. And, and seeking some wisdom and getting some training and getting some more understanding and, and being diligent on it. And so seeking wisdom is equated to seeking riches, right? In the, I mean, in the Proverbs. So we're to diligently seek wisdom the same way we diligently seek riches. Well, that kind of an understanding, I don't, I don't know how many people are as diligent about Bible study as they are about work and providing for their family and about earning an income and earning money. I mean, but that's the kind of drive we need to have. It needs to be that important as well. So we also need to be patient because um, it's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. There are going to be things that, that, because it's written from the mind of God, they're so far above us we may not fully, fully understand it. We have to be patient because we live in a body, in this groaning world, in this world that's, that's decayed by sin, and our flesh has to battle the flesh all the time. In this environment, we get, we get tired, and we get tempted, and we get dragged down all the time. Psalm 119, 83 says, I'm become uh, like a bottle in the smoke, yet do not I forget thy statutes. He says, even though... I'm getting tossed around like kind of kind of this dried up leather bottle. 
that that's that's losing some of what it used to have. Well, I don't want to forget thy statutes. Um, someone said, read the Bible when you feel like it, and when you don't feel like reading it, read it until you do. And that's good advice. That's really good advice, and I like that. Uh, but it's going to require some patience. It's going to require some growth, some time, and um, and a lot of the issues that we face aren't going to be solved overnight. And so we understand that. Number 10, understanding the Bible requires concentration. We have to concentrate. We have to put our minds um, in gear on uh, what we're focusing on. Now, in America, it seems like everybody has a smartphone and everybody has notifications turned on. And so constantly we're pulling out our phone and looking at uh, what buzzed in, what text message came in, what social media um, alert or like or, or comment buzzed in, and we want to respond right away. And it's like our minds never can go deep anymore. And I think that's a shame. We need to have some intense, focused, concentrated times in life where we put everything aside, we turn everything off, and we just focus on the Lord and on the Scriptures I'd encourage you to do that. Maybe spend a whole day and, and just, just go away with God. Take a Bible and a hymnal and just spend time with God. And, and, and I think regularly we need to do that. And maybe if it's an hour a day, your devotion time is a distraction-free environment. I think we'll talk through some more tips for that later. But a distraction-free environment where you're concentrating on the Word of God we're, we're in this, what's called the body of death, you know? We're struggling with what this flesh is constantly being drawn away by distractions, and so we need to learn how to concentrate. Um, having a, having a non-distracting, quiet place is absolutely necessary. And the Lord deserves our undivided attention. He, he gave himself for you, and so I don't think it's too much to ask that we give ourselves back to Him, and especially giving uh, portions of every single day. I understand you might have small children at home if you're a parent, and it might be, you might only have tiny pockets, tiny windows of time, and, and work increase might be just um, the requirements of the things you have to do just to survive. I, I understand that. But as... Uh, as busy and as crazy as life might get, I still encourage you to give time to the Lord. Concentrate on the scriptures and allow the Lord to speak uh, speak to you. And in those times, remove the things that will be distracting. Um, <clears throat> don't have digital things if they are distracting. Don't have... Um, uh, don't be in an, uh, uh, an environment that distracts you. If you're... Some people like to listen to music while they're reading, and that's not distracting. But some people, um, like me, I'm musical, and so I'm thinking about the instruments instead of the Bible when I'm listening to music. And so music itself might be distracting. Remove any distractions and just focus on the Scripture. Um, and, and, and a computer might help, but maybe a computer is a distraction, and so you might need to remove that. Turn off cell phone notifications. Ask the Lord to help your mind focus on the Word of God. Um, um, if there's something in your soul that's bothering you, then, then cast all your care upon the Lord. Ask the Lord to, to allow you to have a time of concentration and focus for a while so that you can give your mind to the Lord for a short time and maybe write down what's bothering you and deal with that um, Deal with that later. If there's things that come into your mind while you're trying to study the Bible, just have a pen and paper ready and jot those things down and, and, and set them aside, set them aside and focus back on the Scripture. And read with that kind of focused attention that I'm here for Bible study, I'm here for the Scriptures, and if I misunderstood what was said, I'm going back and rereading what's there, and I, I'm, I'm not going to get distracted here. Um, a, a, another good tip, don't try not to read while you're tired. I won't say don't read while you're uh, tired, because some people just constantly are tired. I mean, you, you wake up tired. And so um, I, I may not be able to mandate that, obviously, but, um, but as careful as you can be, um, try not to read while you're tired and let that be a distraction. 
I said it already, but maybe read first in the morning. If there's an audio Bible that you can follow along with, that might help your mind to stay focused and attentive on that. Uh, maybe it's just a Bible that is printed too small and you might need to get some larger print and that might help. Uh, just keep on going. Be persistent. Don't give up. Uh, stay um, keep your comprehension levels up. Always try to understand more and more. And those are good tips for staying concentrating on the Word of God. Another tip would be number 11. Understanding the Bible requires paying attention to details. And we'll cover that in more detail in the future when we get into more interpretation and how to study the Bible. And so looking for details. Understanding verse uh, number 12, understanding the Bible requires humility, and we touched on that earlier. God resisteth the proud, but give grace to the humble. And we touched on that when we were talking about prayer and the Holy Spirit. But that's that's the, the approach we need to have when studying the Scriptures, is we approach it with humility. And then this last one I'll mention is that understanding the Bible requires a good church. The church according to Timothy, is the pillar and the ground of the truth. And there's a lot of good teachings on videos. There's a lot of good teachings on the internet. But an internet pastor, a, a, a video recording of a pastor talking to you, I'm not your pastor. I don't know you. And someone on YouTube is not your pastor. They don't know you. You need to you need to make sure you're connected to a good local church that's preaching the Bible and there's a pastor that loves you and, and a church congregation, a family of believers there that is encouraging each other in the Lord and is provoking one another to love and to good works. And, and, and that's, I mean, that's what church life is about. And so the truth is, is not in some educated seminary somewhere. The truth is in the scriptures, which is which is founded in the church as well. And so, um, and so, seek out a good Bible preaching, Bible believing church, and make sure that you stay connected to a church. Most of what we read in the scripture is uh, the New Testament. I mean, most of what we read in the New Testament, it's all connected to churches and. Uh, and, and that's God's design for this time period that we are living in. And, uh, and so I understand there's churches of all levels. There's Bible teaching of all different degrees out there. And as, as long as there's sin in the world, which is forever until Jesus comes back and makes a new world, then you're not going to have a perfect church. I'm not saying uh, look for a perfect church. I mean... We're in it. We're sinners. We're bringing imperfections. We're bringing sin to the table. And so you're not going to have a perfect church, but, but get somewhere that's a, a solid uh, Bible, church, uh, Bible preaching church, a church that's focusing on the scriptures. And when, when that's the case, then the preaching doesn't have to be super dynamic. I mean, if a preacher is opening up the scriptures and studying the Bible with you and you're encouraged to open up the Bible, well, then that's a, you're in a good place when you're studying the scriptures, and, and that's wonderful. Um, so so I, I'm going to stop right there. Bible study requires many, many things in approaching it. And, uh, and, and before, before we come to the Bible, then there's a lot of things we need to make sure that we have kind of in place. And so I'm going to stop right there with church, and we'll pick up next time with a continuation of that thought and then carrying... Um, into, uh, into the next thoughts as well. God bless you, and we'll see you in the next class. Well, thank you for watching this video from our 20-part series on Bible study. I realize this kind of content or our Baptist perspective might not be for everyone, and I don't want to waste your time, but if you did find it helpful or enjoyable, would you subscribe to our channel? We're releasing videos every Monday at noon Pacific Standard Time, and I just want to help you bring the Bible home. So we'll see you maybe in person this Sunday at our church. That's it for now. God bless you, church. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.